This is Law of Attraction Explored. I'm Tim Grimes. If you'd like a free guide that explains the hidden link between relaxation and the Law of Attraction, or if you want more information about my books or my coaching, you can visit RadicalCounselor.com. Enjoy the episode. So I thought that we could have a nice, slow, meditative episode today. As most of you already know, we tend to discuss the same points, the same concepts, over and over again. And what we do is we explore these concepts together in seemingly different ways. But I do think that what I'm really trying to share with you is essentially the same message over and over again in different ways of applying it into your life, practically and spiritually, and recognizing that it can be both practical and spiritual at the same time. And a very simple way of looking at what we're exploring, what we have a tendency to come back to in this show is that when we get very present, there's something here that's always here. And that which is here is naturally fulfilling. Or one could say abundant. Which is why I often like to use the phrase relax into abundance. Because when we relax into this very moment, when we stop judging it or saying this is wrong or that is wrong or I have to do that tomorrow or I have to fix that or whatever, when we drop all that judgment in this very moment, we inherently recognize abundance. Practically speaking, the approach to the law of attraction that I'm talking about with you most of the time boils down to you already fundamentally are abundant. You don't have to do anything to access this abundance except to recognize that you already have it. And that's what I know about. All the other stuff we discuss are approaches and theories and very credible approaches and theories a lot of the time, in my opinion. Ideas like what you suggest to yourself consistently and continuously end up forming what happens in your life. I think that's a very valid theory. And even though we discuss all these different approaches, it all still seemingly comes back when we discuss it on this podcast to this moment right now being inherently, fundamentally abundant. And I'd like to remind listeners of that And quite frankly, more than reminding listeners, I like to remind myself of that. This is what I'm reminding myself of every day. What I'm suggesting to myself every day is that you already have what you want. You already have it. And somewhat ironically, by recognizing that you already have what you want, it seemingly becomes easier and easier for your life to flow in a way that you receive things that you desire in an easier way than before. That's the law of attraction as far as I'm concerned. But if you want specific approaches about how to manifest a certain thing quickly, I don't, I don't know about that. I can give you the theory. I can tell you all about the stories that people like Neville and Joseph Murphy talk about. But I've never been the kind of person who can just spectacularly manifest things 
seemingly as miracles overnight in the external world. Because the miracle that I can manifest overnight, every night, I already have. And I don't have to even wait. I can have it right now. So what I'm telling you is that what we're talking about in this show, even though we are seriously investigating the great law of attraction teachers and looking at their work with a studious eye and trying to critically examine and understand and apply what they're saying, what I'm talking to you about in regards to the law of attraction is not what you're hearing from virtually any other place in today's spiritual marketplace, as Yuji Krishnamurti liked to call it. I've mentioned it a little bit on the podcast, and I've done quite a few YouTube videos about how appalling it is to see how people apply these deep spiritual principles in such a superficial, narcissistic, self-absorbed way and how commercialized these fascinating theories and ideas from great teachers have become. And that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is recognizing that we already have what we want. And the great Law of Attraction teachers are all basically telling you that too as are all the great spiritual teachers. I made a very short video the other day where I just said, it seems like people want to often aspire to that point of being the highest person they can be and to essentially aspire to be Christ, to be one with the Father. But the way that they aspire to be one with the Father is by performing external miracles while the way they really should perhaps aspire to be one with the Father, to be Christ, is to perform inner miracles on oneself, to free oneself from the bondage that there is something wrong with what is happening right now. and instead to recognize the perfection of what is happening right now. And of course, when I criticize others for aspiring incorrectly to do this, I'm criticizing myself as well. That goes without saying. I'm not interested in teaching you how to just change your life externally. Those things are wonderful and good. And there's many practical teachings that we can turn to to help us do that. And I'm all for them. But I want to show you that there's something going on underneath all of these teachings all the time that truly is a saving grace. And you don't have to do anything special to possess it because you already have it. What could be more miraculous than that? What could be a bigger miracle? I feel that what's most difficult to understand is that we're doing nothing wrong and that we don't have to do anything differently to be fine and perfect as we are. And whenever we recognize that, we've got exactly what we want.